a journey of home renovation and maintenance. Welcome to Maintaining 18. A family is facing high energy bills. Janice was the breadwinner under a financial strain and this past winter saw frequent snowfall and much colder days. Her household is all electric. She shares it with two children and her mother. Compared to last season, the energy use has doubled. Spending half her compensation on energy usage is noticeable. Janice is not happy and believe the heater is the cause. And Carrie, Rene, her children, and Peck, her mother, are turning up the thermostat when she is at work. Have you seen the electricity and water bill? Who is using this much electricity and water? With that, she is trying to resolve the problem by restricting the heater's usage, which she believes is the energy hog. The way she goes about it is rude and makes Carrie, Rene, and Peck feel uncomfortable. Why is the AC on now? Switch it off. Switch it off now. It's winter anyway. Energy companies have touted that heating and cooling are the most significant energy users. Janice also observes this. Janice did not resolve the issue to anyone's satisfaction because she was guessing what the problem was. She created a lot of tension in her household. Eventually, the season changed and there was relief. The family is tense when winter approaches because they know how Janice will respond. Janice is energy flossing. At Maintaining 18, Kofi wants to maintain harmony. And as a stay-at-home dad, he surely does not want to be in the crosshairs of Ajwa and over an essential comfort. Kofi wants actionable insights and suggestions based on the provable statements. Kofi decided to learn as much about their energy usage as possible. And that is where Emporia View Gen 2 comes in. There are many devices out there. So, why this one? Emporia View Gen 2 is for residential electrical customers seeking high insight into energy usage. Understanding energy use is what Kofi desires. Another highlight is that there is little guessing as to what is using the energy. The app provides actionable insights and specifically, it tells Kofi when energy use is about to surpass its peak usage, allowing him to take action such as cutting a shower short. Emporia has smart plugs which monitor individual appliances and also controls them. Kofi installed a bidet and does it cost less than toilet paper? A task for the Emporia smart plug. The future can give anything. And to subscribers, insight into energy use is one of them. It the device is for residential monitoring, which means 200 amps. And it also needs internet access and a 2.4 gigahertz router and an Android or Apple smartphone. Technical details are in the description. Kofi realizes his house will soon need its own tablet. Into the maintenance. The installation began with the antenna. Since the drywall has not been installed as yet, it's easier to open the knockout from underneath. The antenna must be located outside the box. It was easier to install the antenna from outside the box and then in. The knockout plug snapped right in place. The antenna will be hidden behind the insulation and the drywall. This is a current transformer or CT. The CT needs to be placed around one of the main service cables. At the bottom of the CT is an arrow. When placed around the service main cable, following the cable in the direction of the arrow should lead to the breaker. It can be said, the K represents the meter and the L represents the breaker. From the meter to the breaker. The 
second current transformer meter or CT meter is installed on the black service entrance cable. These CT meters will be attached to the Emporia view via the 3.5 millimeter sensor ports at the top of the unit. The second CT is installed, taking care to ensure the orientation of the arrow is correct. Next is the installation of the wire harness. Since there are two 200 amp CTs, two wires will have to be connected to breakers, the black and the red. The blue and the white wire will be connected to the neutral bus bar. Regardless of the configuration, the white wire is always connected to the neutral bus bar. Installation is possible even if there are no breakers available by using pigtails. During this portion of the install, an error was made. Square D breakers can accept two copper wires on the same breaker. Nevertheless, the Emporia view requires each applicable wire be on a separate breaker. In this case, two breakers are required one for each CT. Initially, both wires, red and black, were connected to the same breaker. Footage during the introduction and specifically the installation of the breaker with black and red wires attached led to this error. The white insulated aluminum wire is installed on the shared bus. It is important that each screw on the bus secures no more than one wire. These wires are not as rigid as solid wires and take more effort. The twisting helps the wire not to fray during installation into the shared bus. This feels like threading a needle. The white wire is installed on the neutral bus. There will be a lot of wires installed in the panel. Throughout the install, Kofi was cognizant of the fact that the wires will easily become a mess. And so, routing them behind, say, the service mains as seen here, is a good option to keep them out of the way and manageable. The wire is aluminum. It's softer than the copper wire. It also expands more than the copper wire would. Over time, it could come loose. However, in this context, it shouldn't be a problem. The antenna is screwed into the coaxial Wi-Fi connection. Once done, the boot is slipped on to cover or insulate the exposed metal parts. Earlier, the wire harness was plugged into the wire harness connector at the bottom of the Emporia view. There are many wires. Try to keep them untangled throughout the process. Next, the CTs are plugged into the 3.5 millimeter sensor ports located at the top of the unit and labeled A, B, and C. Only A and B are used. This next step is to install the CTs that will monitor each appliance. In this case, it is the hot water heater. There are four breakers, 40 amps each, with 240 volts. The CTs required are about eight. However, you can get away with installing four. Four will be installed. The installation is simply Install the CT over one of the hot wires that originate from the breaker. Keep in mind the direction of the arrow. A word of caution, if an antioxidation agent is used, some form of grease, the wires could slip out. This could create a dangerous situation if the breakers are on. Be careful. The wires that bring power to the breaker for the heater are 8 gauge. 
there is not much space to get the open CT clamp around the wire. But once closed, the CT meters fit comfortably. The installation is getting more difficult as progress is made since less space is available after each CT meter is installed. For each of the four breakers and for consistency, one CT meter is installed per black wire. Installing from the bottom up would be easier. Unaware that Adra was taking a shower, Kofi turned the power off and shifted the wires more than typical, giving enough space to install the CT meter. <laughs> Next, three CTs are being installed to monitor the air conditioning system. One onto the compressor. The compressor uses a 50 amp breaker. Great. There are two 60 amp breakers. One runs the air handler and the blower. The other powers the emergency or auxiliary heater mounted on top of the air handler. Could you not quote me here? Now, there's something to note about the CTs. They are marketed as being 50 amp CTs. However, the documentation states these CTs can accurately record up to 63 amps at 120 volts. The lower range is 0.04 amps, also at 120 volts. The wire sizes to the left of the panel are a bit larger and that does not leave much room to install the CTs. However, moving away from the breaker along the wire, further up gave enough space to install the CTs. In this case, it was for the compressor. To have a successful installation, a bit of shuffling may be necessary in cases such as this. These wires cannot be easily shifted up or down, only forward into the panel or the opposite direction. Now, these breakers are 240 volts, meaning they have two hot legs. Only one CT is installed per breaker. Well, current drawn through the breaker will not be measured correctly since only one of two legs are being measured. To compensate for this, the Emporia Energy app has a multiplier. The multiplier is very flexible. Not only can you double the current or volts measured by the CT, you can change it to a decimal or three times the amount. It's very flexible. In this case, the measurement will be doubled. Now, this will not give a very accurate measurement, but it will be very close. The Emporia view is between plus or minus 2% accuracy. That's good enough. How does Kofi know that wires can come loose? Hmm. This section was one of the challenging points of the install. There were large gauge wires obscuring other large gauge wires. The wires towards the back was the target for installing, installing the CT. This was done by shifting the wires out of the way and installing the CT in a manner that would allow the wires to be pressed back in. Hey, it works! As the installation continues, Kofi recalls negotiating energy contracts. Having the Emporia view will definitely help with this. Knowing totally energy use and patterns will help you not to overpay. Thank you for continuing to watch. Almost there. The breakers to power the Emporia view are now being installed. These breakers came in handy. There were extras due to changing many of the breakers to arc fault breakers. The breakers power a device inside the panel to 
my knowledge, there's no code against this. The CTs are being connected to the 2.5 millimeter sensor ports towards the side of the Emporia View Generation 2 unit. There are quite a bit of wires, but not to worry. The last step is to protect the unused sensor ports from dust. Time to power up the unit. The unit uses only 3 watts. The LED light is very faint and does not show under the 1500 lumen spotlight being used. There is an audio feedback, a beep, but that was it. For meaningful information, the app has to be used. Yep. The installation is complete. Now for the app. The Square D breakers support two copper wire connections or one aluminum wire connection. Initially, the Emporia view was installed with red and black wires installed to one breaker, which is why this message. The option to proceed without fixing the problem is allowed, but this path is obscure. Kofi repeated the power installation and using two breakers. An option, I have fixed the issue, retry, select it. Each 2.5mm sensor port is associated with a circuit. In the Emporia Energy application, name the circuits to indicate what it's monitoring. The option to select the circuit type identifies common energy users such as air conditioner, water heater, kitchen, microwave or furnace. The circuit type determines the icon. Since these are 240 volt circuits and one of two wires has a monitor, a multiplier of two is entered. Circuits 1 through 4 monitor the water heater and circuits 5 through 7 monitor various aspects of the heating and cooling system. Notice the train TAM7 with the fire icon, which is the auxiliary heater, a 27 kilowatt heater. That is one toasty heater but is expensive to run. Balance with the lightning icon is the power consumption used by unmonitored circuits. That is all for today. Each day of completed maintenance keep blight at bay is a victory. May your home rise in value and prosperity follow. The day is one.